Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. If you are new, thanks for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I am going to share 12 books that I hauled during the month of April. Uh, as usual, I am going to start with books that I received from publishers uh, and ZG Stories. So first up is a memoir from Harbour Publishing. Return to Solitude by Canadian author Grant Lawrence. And this is a follow-up to his first memoir, uh, which was called Adventures in Solitude. And I think that the first memoir was about uh, Grant's childhood. And then this new one is about his life as a husband and father. And all of the stories in the memoir take place in Desolation Sound which is in the West Coast in BC, also known as the Sunshine Coast. Um, I know virtually nothing about Grant Lawrence, and I'm not sure if the first memoir needs to be read first, but I'm going to give this one a try and we will see how it goes. And this comes out May 28th. The next three books are all from Book Hug Press, which is just a great independent publisher here in Canada. Um, and first up is Good Mum on Paper. This is a collection of essays edited by Stacey May Fowles and Jen Sukvang Lee. And this is being published on May 3rd. The 20 essays in this are about motherhood and how motherhood can enhance and disrupt <laughs> the creative process. So you may know some of the authors who have contributed to these essays and to this collection. Um, I've talked about several of them on my channel in the past. Um, I'm thinking like Lee Miracle, J.L. Richardson, and Heather O'Neill, among many others. Those are the ones off the top of my head. So this sounds like it will be a really interesting glimpse into that relationship between motherhood and creativity. Next is another Canadian author, uh, Bystander, by Mike Steves. And this is, it was published already on April 19th. The main character is Peter Simons, who has been away from home working for about nine months. When he returns back to his apartment, there is a strange smell <laughs> coming from his neighbor's apartment. And eventually a body is discovered and Peter goes from trying to, you know, stay at a distance, not get in the way, to somehow getting involved even after new people have moved into the apartment. So this book sounds like a really interesting look just at humans and how we interact with our neighbors. Um, and I liked this sentence in the description. Um, Bystanders is a pitiless bold work of intense psychological realism narrated by a professionally successful but socially bankrupt anti-hero who, expe who expects global connection and local anonymity. Um, I really liked that. Um, I think this has potential to be really interesting, I think, I hope. Um, and then the last book from Book Hug Press is coming out on June 7th. And this is also from a Canadian author, Remnants by Celine Heigbert. I don't know how to say that properly. Uh, this is translated from the French by Alicia Jensen. And this is about a father-daughter relationship. It's literary fiction, but I believe it's inspired by Celine's uh, own father because it says something about, um, you know, the reader attempts to um, untangle fact from fiction. So I think the structure of this is also different. It uses dialogues and questionnaires. Uh, there's photographs, there's dreams uh, that have been documented. So I also like the idea that it presents multiple versions of the father. So this sounds like it will be an intriguing kind of investigation of a relation, excuse me, of a relationship and character. So thanks again to Harbor Publishing and to Book Hug Press and Zeggy Stories for these four books. The next book is Blue Woman by Jonathan Page. This is a fictionalized story of Rose Hartwood who was a Welsh painter. And this novel explores who Rose uh, is as a woman and who she is as an artist, uh, from her upbringing, her artistry, her fame, and then to her legacy. So I love books like this uh, for a few reasons. I love when authors imagine, you know, a life 
and then fill in those gaps for us. And I especially love when this is done about someone that I don't know much about. And it, you know, it helps to bring these lives to our attention. So I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. The sixth book that I have to share with you is one that has been on my radar for a while. And that is Anne of Manhattan by Brina Starler. And, uh, you know, you probably already know that I am a huge fan of Anne of Green Gables, my favorite Canadian classic. And this is a modern spin on Anne's story. So in this one, Anne goes to New York for grad school. Uh, Diana Barry and Gilbert Blythe are part of the story, obviously, they need to be. Uh, Diana as Anne's best friend and kindred spirit. And of course, Gilbert as the academic competitor and secret love interest. So this has two things that I love, uh, Anne, of course, and New York. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this kind of reimagines this story. Next is a sequel that I have been um, wanting to read for a little bit now, Josh Mailerman's uh, Mallory. This is the sequel to Bird Box, which I really enjoyed. Um, this continues that story, and if you haven't read Bird Box, there are basically like creatures, we don't really know, um, that are roaming the earth, and if you see them with your eyes, they will kill you. So people have learnt to survive by being blindfolded uh, when they go outside. So the ending of it, of uh, Bird Box, I thought was quite beautiful, and I didn't really think it needed a sequel, but in this book, Mallory finds out that someone she thought was dead may in fact be alive. So she has to make a choice to, you know, stay with her children where they know they are safe or risk everything again to find out if the person that she hopes is alive really is. So I really enjoy Mailerman's writing and I'm curious to see how he continues the story and yeah, where he goes with it. Next is a new author to me, but one that I've heard a lot about and I picked up Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. Um, this is about Madison and she has two twin children who will be moving in with her and her family. And she has asked her roommate from a boarding school, Lillian, to become their caregiver. So the catch is that these twins spontaneously combust when they become agitated. And it seems a bit ridiculous, but it's true. And it turns out that Lillian becomes quite attached to the kids and might really need them maybe even more than they need her. So the premise of this is quite intriguing. And um, I think one of the other booktubers that I saw talk about this said something about how they thought that the skirt was lifted on the cover. And I thought the same thing, but no, it's really them being on fire. Next on the pile is a book that has had a lot of hype uh, Paranesi by Susanna Clark. Um, I have never read anything by her before and even though I know people love this book, I still really have no idea what it's about. So the blurb on the back says this, uh, Piranesi's house is no ordinary building. Its rooms are infinite, its corridors endless, its walls lined with thousands upon thousands of statues. Within the labyrinth of halls an ocean is imprisoned. Waves thunder up staircases. Rooms are flooded in an instant, but Piranesi is not afraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth itself. He lives to explore the house. There is one other person in the house, a man called The Other, who visits Piranesi twice a week and asks for help with research into a great and secret knowledge. But as Piranesi explores, evidence emerges of another person and a terrible truth begins to unravel, re revealing a world beyond the one Piranesi has always known. So this sounds intriguing and very different than any of the books that I would normally read, um, but I've heard such high praise about it, so I really want to find out what all the hype is about. Okay, at number 10 is a book that I mentioned in my 12 books on my TBR, because of You video, I think is what it was called. And this one is because of Leo Bancroft. It is all Leo's fault. Uh, Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Le Leo spoke so highly about this book and basically sold me on it. So 
This is about two authors, uh, Eva Mercy and Shane Hall, I think it is. Um, and they reconnect at a literary event 20 years after they have had this week together and there is still a connection between them. And now they have seven days in Brooklyn to kind of catch up. So this book has themes of black life and motherhood and I'm really looking forward to seeing if this holds up to Leo's high recommendation. Uh, so next is a debut. It's a book I mentioned last year that I was most anticipating uh, and that is The Beguiling by Susie Gartner. And I'm just going to read the blurb for this one because I don't think that I can really describe it any better. Uh, so this is this is what it says. Lucy is a lapsed Catholic whose adolescent pretensions to sainthood are unexpectedly revived following the disturbing deathbed confession of her cousin Zoltan. Afterwards, Lucy becomes a magnet for the unshriven, and she's transformed into a self-described flesh and blood wailing wall. I love that. Um, as strangers unburden themselves to her, Lucy finds herself addicted to these dark stories craving hit after hit. As the confessions pile up, Lucy begins to wonder if Zoltan's death was as random and unscripted as it appeared. She clutches at alarming syn synchronicities and seeks meaning from the stranger's stories, wondering why they seem connected to each other and eerily echo elements of her own life. With ruthless wit and dizzying energy, the beguiling explores blessings and curses, sainthood and sin, mortality and guilt in all its guises, weaving together tales of errant mothers, vengeful plants, canine wisdom and murder. This electrifying debut novel lays bare the sacrifices some are willing to make to get what they think they desire. So this is one appeals to me, so I, I hope I like it. And then the final book. Oh boy, this book. Okay, the final book is The Samurai's Garden by Gail Tsukiyama. And this book has potentially been some of my, has been on some of my other book hauls because this is my third copy of this book. Um, the first copy, I can't even remember really what happened. There was something wrong with it. Um, yeah, I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was the printing or the pages or something like that. Um, so I picked up another copy. Then the second copy got water spilled, like not just a little bit of water, a lot of water spilled on it uh, during the move. So I gave it away. And then I watched Alexandra's video and it reminded me that I really wanted to read it, um, that it was high on my TBR. So I picked up this copy. And if you haven't seen Alexandra's videos for like her channel, it's amazing. It's called The Ritual of Reading. I will leave a link to the video below. Um, all of her videos are quite lovely. So um, this book takes place in the 1930s in Japan. Stephen is a young Chinese painter. He is sent to his family's summer home uh, to recover from tuberculosis and he is cared for by the housekeeper who is also a master gardener. So over a time period of a year Stephen learns from the gardener and grows both healthier and also spiritually. So I have a feeling, um, especially from Alexandra's video, that this has a very calm and peaceful feel to it. So I'm hoping that this is the last copy that I will ever have to buy <laughs> because um, I'm hoping that I will finally get to it. So these are the 12 books that I have hauled this month. Um, hopefully I can get to some of them sooner rather than later. Uh, please let me know if you have read any of the books on this pile. Um, did you like them? Are you interested in any of these? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And please let me know, you know, if you have any books that you have hauled this month that you're really eager to get to and start reading. So I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget to make every day an adventure. Thank you.